Uh, I have reintroduced Mikey to the joys of Payday 2. Oh, it's a regular stealth mission. And he did not get us killed repeatedly. I did. But he didn't. Yeah, you you were 39 and holding. <laughs> how old are you? Just let me put... How old? <laughs> old are you? Yeah, how old are you? Uh, just let me put you on hold. <laughs> Steve, <laughs> leave them there. <laughs> so, yeah, Mikey, you, you dabbled with Payday 2 uh, a couple of years back. Yeah. In a sort of, yeah, okay, we'll play this. It's kind of trolly. Let's do this. Haha, <laughs> rocket launch into a stealth mission. Yeah. Um, but this time we actually tried it. And how did you? What did you think? Well, I I, I approached the game a, a bit more, a bit differently now. Now that I understand it a little bit more, there's loads of stuff built in that I had no idea existed. And Jan was explaining that because the game has gone through a ton of iterations over the last uh, eleven, several, years. Uh, 11 years, it's no longer kind of the game uh, that it once was. And there are a couple of things that I don't gel with. I I find the movement a bit skiddy. It's a bit loose. So you run up to a ladder, and then the ladder will go as you stop. There's, so, there's some weird imprecisions as well. Like, um, you'll duck behind something, a guard will walk past, and you'll try and sneak back around it, but you're caught on it. Yeah, yeah. And it'll take you a few seconds <laughs> to get loose, which, when you're trying to do stealth runs, is quite annoying. And when you're trying to do loud runs, is also quite annoying. Yeah, um, that, that was my main thing. So the... Um, trying to get used to the control system, I think, was one of the biggest things. And that's maybe why previously when I tried stealth, I didn't quite get it. I think that was the main thing there. But and now, now I get it. it. It's a really interesting game. And it's actually aged surprisingly well. Um, and there's some des design decisions that after we accidentally played it this week for two and a half hours on our let's play for a game for an hour. Um we, we sort of had a little debrief and there were some things that kept coming back like a couple of days later. Mm. Um, but one of the things we should talk about is the engine hasn't aged well. The, the original was in the diesel engine, which I know virtually nothing about, but the game has progressed so far beyond there with huge maps, large amounts of characters, lots of variability, stuff it was never designed to do. that it's actually really hard to use, especially for modders, which is probably okay. why Payday 3 is going to be in, in Unreal. It's going to be interesting to see it in Unreal. And, and I wonder whether it's going to uh, take the, the ethos of the original one or whether it's really going to be a new game. I've, I've found a lot of, uh, of re-releases or new, new versions of a game. Sometimes your nostalgia spoils what the new game actually ends up being. Well, it's supposed to be the either four or five classic heisters, depending <coughs> on which ones they use, um, in New York, in open world New York. <clears throat> but so it's GTA like Four then? Hi, Munza. Um, GTA Four, but a heist game. Okay, so the reason we want to talk about this a little bit um, is there's a few little design decisions that go in there that are actually really impactful. So it wasn't really designed as a stealth game, and we had a lot of fun on some of the loud missions, um, some of which we did very, very badly, some of which yeah, we did yeah. very well in. But the stealth missions give you a lot more money and experience. Of course, in a stealth mission, if you get spotted, it's no longer a stealth mission. And some missions are stealth only. So you lose the, the game one in at that point. Yeah. The one in particular we were doing is incredibly lucrative. I mean, because of the way the difficulty is laid out, if you're spotted, you lose the game anyway. You may as well crank it up to maximum difficulty. It's not like tougher guards and bulletproof cameras is going to make a difference. So, this is a loud game, or rather a violent shooty game, uh, with objectives and, you know, crimey things, with stealth bits. So how do you balance that? Because there's nothing to stop you from just going around, sneaking up behind guards, murderizing them with murder, uh, dumping the bodies and just clearing the level, right? That's the easy way of doing it. So the thing they've come up with is a pager mechanic. If you've not played Pager 2, uh, Payday 2, Mikey, what's the pager mechanic in Payday? So it doesn't apply to civilians, so you can knock out civilians, capture them, kill them, whatever. So take them out of the game. You do lose money for that. Yeah. Uh, but with the guards, if you take out a guard, they, they get paged. Oh, what, what's going on? Are you okay? And you only get four of those in any particular level. And, and thinking about it, it actually makes the game far more enjoyable because it ups the ante significantly. Because you got, I, I mean, that would be my but first here's call. The thing, though. It, it, 
yeah, no, I agree. It's not just that you only get four pages. So if you try and do a fifth page, the alarm goes off anyway. Like on your fourth page, the, the control voice will say something along the lines of, you know what, that's enough. You've been messing around, do it one more time and I'm ringing the alarm. Um, but it's not just you have four pages. All of you share those four pages. So when Mikey and I at different ends of a military compound trying to steal their loot, we may come up with short-term plans, but the other person may turn a corner and find three guards just sitting in a room staring at him, <laughs> which can have huge effects. Or in one case, Mikey sneaks away from a guard, sees a civilian, panics, shoots the civilian, the glass behind him breaks, and the guards on the floor below ring the alarm. Like, there's a, there's a real need to communicate. And in some of those moments where we nearly got caught and we didn't have any pages left, they came back, Mikey was on camera going... It, it, it was exhilarating. Which is a great sign of the game. Yeah. Hello, Mindstammer. Good evening. <laughs> so, yeah, just from a game design point of view, just that decision, a shared resource. Mm. And it's not like answering the pager is, is instant. You have It takes a few seconds to answer it, during which time you're crouched next to a body, which, with all that yep. implies. Um, I, I, one of the things I, I, I really. Um, really enjoyed about the game is all of the mechanics that lay down some of them are a bit weird some of them are more rpg-esque so the fact that you you dodge more or you can heal or you get more ammo by doing certain things and i because i haven't played the game in a while i've got yan kindly sort of guiding me through and saying well actually you need to have this set up and do that it's not just picking your weapon and picking what level of armor you want it, it actually goes very deep and that that can be very confusing and not very accessible to a newcomer. That's that's one of the yeah. No, things... the, the learning curve is is a little bit intense after eleven years of new systems, revamp systems, remove systems, re revamp. Systems. Right. Yeah. Um, I mean, so I felt the skills, same. You've got perks. You know, it's, it's all kinds of stuff going on. I, I mean, I felt a little bit overwhelmed when I jumped back into GTA Five after mm. like playing it on the Xbox Three Hundred and Sixty. <laughs> that was like my first playthrough, and then. And then after that, it was I think it was PS4, then PC. But it's changed so much since then, and I, I think I think that's a great way of of keeping a game going is by adding all of the additional content, which is what they've they've done over the years. It's but incredible support. the accessibility. So it's interesting because on the one hand, I really like the variety of characters you can forge, George. Right between which voice actor slash character model you're using, um, some of which are frankly hilarious, like. Ron Perlman is one of the characters playing effectively his character in Sons of Anarchy, like an old biker with the same voice and the same swearing and everything else. But when you're answering these pager calls and you're trying to calm the guards down, one of his is, Ach! you know, I think Boromir is probably the best character in Lord of the Rings. He's just really misunderstood, don't you think? <laughs> this voice on the other side going, uh, yeah, we'll get back to all that. <laughs> like it's just moments like that that are just beautiful but you've also got uh primary and secondary weapons with modifications and ammunition types and that radically changes how you play then the skills you can unlock the experience then the perk deck so on the one hand you've got this incredible freedom of expression with some just broken builds that are just massively overpowered and some broken builds that are just unplayable um but the the learning curve is really high mm. It means it's very rewarding once you get it, but again, being accessible. And one of the things that I really was impressed by is we were playing an 11-year-old game. Mm. And I'm not a graphics... Well, I, I, I can be a graphics snob, but it's, a, it's, a, it's amazing how if you get the mechanics of a game right, it can still be very enjoyable without having to worry about having a oh. ton of, a of really, flashy yeah, stuff. Game. Mm. Like... um some the the first one i usually take people through when we're learning stealth, stealth missions is the first bank you have to roll can be done stealth and it never occurs to you when you're first doing it they say stealth is an option it's like nah just stay by the drill and fight off hordes of guards and then carry these bags very slowly across the map to a van while snipers shoot at you or do it this way and you get a huge amount of experience and it's a great way of getting yeah. those first few skills for people <clears throat> and that's kind of exciting because there's a bank full of civilians and you really don't want to wake them up unless 
you're coordinated enough and not panicked enough to keep that entire room <laughs> either calm or dead. Yeah. Like no one's allowed to press an alarm. But then you get to the murky water facility in Shadow Raid. So it's four o'clock in the morning in this huge uh, private military contractor compound, and you're going through their vaults. And the lighting and the fact that there's all these patrol routes and little things like you open a door to sneak through somewhere, but now the guards can use that door and all the patrol routes have changed. And we got caught out a couple of times by that. Like I didn't even know they could come out here, um, which is a great way for me to die. Um, Although there's a there's a dual side to that. Later on, I realized during that game. So it's an interesting mechanic that the guards don't open a door, but the moment you open it, it becomes part of their part of their pathfinding. But one of the advantages of that was the fact that now guards uh, were given more space to roam. So it's a disadvantage because they might be real... somewhere that they're not usually. But now you freed up the area. There's more area for them to be moved around. The game we're discussing is Payday Two. And hello, Vertex, and hello, Deirdrick. Um, and I, said, I think I said hello, Mind Stammer. Um, yeah, it's it's a game we, we've been playing the last couple of weeks. I mean, once a week, the last couple of weeks. 